Brilliant. So welcome everybody this morning to our session on social media. I'm Sally and I'm Head of Partnerships at Much Loved, for those of you that don't know, and I'm very excited to be joined this morning by our relatively new colleague, Yuta, who's Head of Engagement at Much Loved and has been with us for um, a couple of months. And despite us looking like we're in completely different time zones, I'm actually only about 18 miles down the road, although I look like I'm in, in darkness in comparison to Yitta. It's obviously much sunnier up the country in Anisham in comparison to Sussex. Um, anyway, I'm going to hand over to Yitta now, who's going to kick off our session. Thank you very much, Sally, for that introduction. Yeah, I, I think I just have a lot of lighting here in this room, but I can assure you that it's really dark and grey and gloomy um, in, in Amersham. So uh, uh, it, it does feel like an early December morning for sure. I'm super excited to get the opportunity to meet you all um, in, in my early few weeks and months with, with Much Loved. Um, really excited to be here to talk about um, what we have now, I think for the second year running, been working with the end of year totals. And, and I know we ran a, a webinar back in April on social media, but um, uh, this will, will uh, cover some new ground for you, I, I hope. And most importantly, we really feel like this is a great time of the year um, for this particular content and you you'll see in just a moment exactly why let me just pull up my um, my screen so we can uh, step you through all of this um, information can you see my my screen yeah I can see wonderful that. okay so well to start off with yeah I said that this this is a really great time of the year to to um to to talk about the the success of your tribute fund scheme uh, because it's a season of giving obviously um but what we had in mind for today is is really to to show you how to access your uh, end of year figures and and also to help you with how you can use that information on social media um, um and throw in some practical advice as well and examples that you'll easily be able to replicate. Now, let's start off with why this matters so much. Why does social media matter? We know that over 75% of the UK population is on a social channel of some sort. Um, Facebook being more than 44 million of those, um, of, uh, of people in the UK, though, Facebook is declining, um, th over 30 million on Instagram, 38 million on LinkedIn, and over 19 million on X, formerly Twitter. Uh, and let, don't even get me started on, on TikTok. That's the fastest growing channel. So there are many, many social media platforms. We've just mentioned four here. Selfishly, these are the ones that we're um, using ourselves. Uh, but you may have many more to, to throw into that mix. But what you might not know is that actually they're not there just for entertainment. Uh, actually, almost 45% of internet users use social media as a search tool. Um, and quite scarily, actually, the average Facebook user spends one year and seven months of their life on the platform. So that, that's quite a lot. Um, but apart from cat videos and various social posts about what Christmas market uh, people have visited this weekend, etc. What is it that your audience really wants to see? Well, we actually know from, from some research that's been published that actually 56% of consumers think that brands should be more, be more relatable. Be more relatable. What, what does that actually mean? What kind of posts are those? Those are the kind of things to keep in mind when you're thinking about your own social media activity. Um, why do we use social media as organizations? Well, we do it to, to drive awareness, uh, to build trust. Um, and, and for a charity, that opportunity to share your vision and your mission and the values and your case for support, social media is an excellent platform for all of that. 
We also know that it can be a really hostile and fast paced terrain with a lot of change all the time and new, um, uh, new uh, trends and new hashtags that are cropping up and a place where a lot of professional and personal opinions overlap and you might not always notice when that happens. Um, so one thing that's really great is that um, for the first time this year, the Charity Commission actually issued some social media guidance back in, in September 2023. And I definitely recommend that you check this out um, uh, to see what that has to say. We um, and, and I think that's relevant whether you're using social media a lot um, or whether you don't use it very much and, and would like to start this season. Um, what we're coming at with this morning is um, that same uh, situation, really, whether you're using social media a lot or, or whether you're looking to, to make a start, we're offering you lots of um, resources that will really help you um, and some very useful shortcuts as well um, for the festive period and, and beyond as well. Now, just for a little bit of inspiration, as we all crave that on a grey and miserable Monday morning. Um, here's a really absolutely inspiring story that, that really just knocked me for six when I came across it. Um, so Nikki Newman, I don't know if you've heard of her, um, but um, the story of her actually hit national news. Um, so if you're just Googling, you will see a lot about her. Um, well, we first came across Nikki Newman back in September um, because her husband set up a tribute page. You can see that here. Sally, would you yeah. tell me what, what actually happened in the course of that? Yeah, it was, um, I think it might have been a Monday evening, maybe about nine o'clock and a colleague mentioned that this tribute page had been set up. I think actually his wife followed Nikki Newman's uh, Instagram account and I think there's 328,000 follow, followers on there. Anyway, if they can tell us the exact amount. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right, 328. Okay, there you go. Uh, at least um, last night. <laughs> and um, so my colleague Richard's wife noticed that Alex, her husband, had set up a tribute page for Nikki on our site and had promoted it on his um, Instagram feed or on her Instagram feed. And literally within about an hour, we'd not only collected £10,000 for the five charities that he had chosen to support, but also there was just the most phenomenal amount of content in terms of pictures and stories and thoughts and virtual gifts that were being left on the tribute page. It was an incredible amount of activity. And they've chosen to support these five charities on the tribute page. So when somebody goes through to make a donation, it's up to the donor which charity they choose to support. Now, some of these charities had been supported by Nikki herself during her lifetime. And then Woking and Sam Bear had looked after her. So they had supported her in the last few weeks of her lifetime. And one of the most incredible things about this page is that um, I noticed there was an event set up a couple of weeks ago. And it's been set up by someone who's completely unknown to Nikki other than they followed her on social media. But, but this lady has chosen to run the Bath Half Marathon in her memory for one of their chosen support, chosen charities. And that event is taking place in March. And I just think that's an incredible example of the power of social media that somebody completely unknown is setting up an event on their tribute page and choosing to fundraise for one of their selected charities. And that event isn't until March. So this tribute page is going to go on and it's going to continue raising income for these particular organisations. So I just think that kind of shows you the, the power of um, social media uh, connected with the power of tribute pages and how that can extend the reach of the pages because events pages don't have to be set up by the fund holder or a friend. They can be set up by a friend or a family member, or in this case, someone kind of fairly unknown. Um, and so that is just helping to extend the reach of, of the potential of the tribute page. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it doesn't, it just goes from strength to strength. And we know also from um, having, all of us here at Much Loved 
um, you know, we we have been following this and just been absolutely gobsmacked at the impact. Yeah. And I think it, it's that bit about the impact of social media and joining these dots and how it all comes together and 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 how um, you can create ongoing activity and support and uh, and continue to drive awareness um, because you know that was September okay we're in December and the the, the there's still activity and, and as you said um, there's going to be more coming up in March so it, it just shows the, the potential and and of course with that volume of followers I, I know that most of us don't have over 300,000 followers okay um, but but it, it shows the impact of and, and, and help spread uh, the mission of, of these wonderful charities. So that's but, a bit of inspiration for you. Yeah. And so alongside that, what I'm interested to know is how you will use social media to promote your tribute pages. So I'm just going to launch a little poll. I don't do these very often, so let's hope this works. <laughs> but um, hopefully you'll see the question coming up on your screen and you'll be able to select um, what kind of, um, if someone can tell me whether if that's not showing oh yeah it's showing because I can see people voting so um, yeah I snuck in the none bar first thing this morning because I was thinking actually what am I doing I'm assuming that you all do oh. actually use social media to promote your tribute pages but maybe that's not the case um, which actually is brilliant because you're here today and um, maybe we can help you to provide you with some content to use on your social media about your tribute schemes. Yeah, well, I'm interested to see that um, that nobody's uh, using Snapchat. Um, so that that's an interesting one. So, you know, that gives me a sigh of relief because we're using it. And, you, you know, you have that feeling of, are we on the right channels? And I think every organization grapples with those. Are we on the right channels for what we're trying to achieve here? And as you know, there are so many. So you could be on, uh, you know, you could always be on more. But is it relevant is the question. So it's really interesting. Uh, I, think I, I think if I end the poll, Yuta, and then I think I can share the results so everybody yeah. can can see them so hopefully the, that you can see how everybody else on this um webinar is using social i guess not surprisingly facebook is up there that's your year and seven months of your lives <laughs> right there in front of us i think after hearing that stat the first time i came off facebook <laughs> um yeah the twitter's pretty high instagram so all the usual suspects i guess Excellent. So I shall just, hopefully you've all been able to see that. I'll just stop sharing that. Okay. Well, I think uh, what um, what's interesting there is, uh, you know, those percentages that we shared initially, they were highly relevant for, for who's in the room today. Okay. So from uh, moving on, I think from, from Nikki Newman, then we definitely want to, to get to grips now with what exactly you can do. Uh, what, what does your... Uh, version of that look like? Well, first of all, um, Sally's going to show you this morning exactly how you can access those brilliant stats and, and all the other information that's available in your partner area. So we, we're going to jump onto that very shortly. Um, but, but I think back to the point about being relatable, um, it's about connecting with your supporters and, and showing exactly how much in memory can uh, matter for you. And that can be, you know, in the case of, um, for example, the Willow Trust and Leon Perro Foundation to to talk about how much you've received from in memory donations this year and what that enabled you to do, how many families you've supported. And that can be illustrated with testimonials and and also activities from supporters uh, about how uh, how a tribute fund has helped them. Uh, and if you have the family's permission to to highlight, put the spotlight on an individual tribute. So those are some of the ideas that you can take into it. Um, we've got a couple of examples here. Uh, Yvonne, I hear your question around examples and how people are using these methods uh, of promo. So I've got a couple of for you to, to take a look at. We've got, for example, uh, Mummy Star and Papyrus here who are um, leveraging social storytelling in, in two very different ways. So Mummy Star have gone 
ahead and, and use some of the ready-made resources that we provide from the partner area and, and build that out with, with messaging of, of their own. Uh, Papyrus, on the other hand, for example, have, have just shared a, a story about a, a walk that has been um, done in memory of a person um, and with some illustrations, pictures from that walk. Um, so these are really engaging storytelling posts that um, that uh, will really resonate with with your followers. Now, last year, um, here are examples of the types of um, um, posts that some of our uh, charity partners uh, put out um, with um, some of the ready-made artwork that was provided and customizing the um, messaging that went along with that. So just a few ideas and inspiration there. And oh, another one from Shine. Now, the most important thing here is that there's quite a lot that can be done, um, but we have actually done all the hard work for you already. So what we do is this year, we're customizing all the artwork with your branding and we send it out to you. We also provide some suggested wording and all you need to do is copy paste and share that. Um, it helps you really engage with your donors and community. Now we say that it's perfect for the festive season, but Sally, you asked me earlier uh, on this, uh, didn't you? It's actually not just for the festive season. We talk about the season of giving, but um, you can actually do this all year round. And uh, we'll show you exactly why and how in just a minute. Um, yeah, over to you, Sally, for the demo. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So just before I go on to that, actually, we had a question in the Q&A um, from Amy. And uh, she'd be interested to know if people use the same content on each of their channels or if they create different content. So um, if you are one of the charities or uh, the charities that you, you know, well, it was difficult for us to see whether you were posting on multiple channels or just one or two of the channels that we suggested. But if you are posting on multiple channels, if you wouldn't just mind popping in, in the chat box, whether that you're using the same content for each channel, maybe you're just um, amending it ever so slightly to make it more appropriate. But um, yeah, if you could answer that question, because I, I can't answer that question for Amy. And um, I shall just share, whilst you're doing that, I'm going to talk through uh, how to get your kind of end of year figures from your partner area. So I'm just at the moment sharing what we call, um, it's our ACSS, it's our demonstration partner area. So none of the information in this is real. Um, and whether you are an optimum or an advantage partner, so if you're an advantage partner, you'll have a blue stripe across here instead of a gold, but you'll all have access to your reports. And this is the key bit about how to get the information from your reports. So this square up in the right hand side where it says donations to date this year will immediately give you exactly what it says, your, your donation, the amount raised to date for this particular year. So this is obviously very relevant as we're coming towards the end of the year. Um, so really easy for you to pop in here and get your end of year figure up until the end of this year. Obviously, when you start from January next year, you'll have to root around a little bit for that figure. Um, the other figure, which you, might be of interest to you, might be your kind of your, your total raised to date through the scheme. Um, and that information is listed here. So it's broken down into total, including offline donations, or you've got online donations and offline donations. So that information is available to all of you. Um, and you might want to do an end of year post, but then you might want to do a post when you reach a particular milestone. So you know, that might be uh, £50,000 for you, it might be £100,000 for you, it might be half a million or it might be a million. Depending on the size of your organisation, you might set different milestones for your tribute fund scheme and that might create a really nice opportunity for you to be able to post. Um, if you are looking for your end of, you know, if you're looking for your figures, the amount that you've raised for uh, 2023 and we're already in 2024 then you can get that information from your donor detail report 
So um, all the reports follow the same format and you've got a filter by donation date. So you can select a range. So you can either do your year to date, which you've done, or if you're looking for a custom um, time zone then just click custom and then you can just pop your cursor in the from and then the two select your dates. And then if you click on download and click on show, you can select what fields that you want to um, download. So you could just download the amount received. Um, you don't have to download any other information or we'll just give you a snapshot of exactly what's being collected. Um, and then download it and then you can open it up into a CSV file. So really easy for you to be able to access that information. Um, also, actually, I'm going to go back up to here because if you wanted to feature uh, maybe on your social media feed a tribute page that has most active, then the tributes listed on this section, most active tribute, that pulls through information on tributes created through your own scheme. I mean, I appreciate that you probably will want to ask permission, but this could potentially be a good way for you to approach someone and, and ask them to be featured as a case study within your social media feeds. So this most active tribute column will give you information on tributes that are used most regularly through uh, uh, pages that have been created directly through your own scheme. So you can just click on them and have a look at them and see if they're suitable. Um, so the other area that I wanted to show you from here, or you're going to say something, you have to... <laughs> well, I was going to ask, actually, um, so do the tributes show up here regardless of who set them up? If um, if if a family has gone ahead and, and set up a tribute page without the charity knowing it, um, might this be the first place that they are becoming aware of that then? Uh, well, hopefully our charity partners have got their alert set up so they'll be aware every time a new tribute is being created. Um, and I can show you how to set those up. But the, in this, col in this uh -huh. square in particular, it just... Uh, creates feedback on tributes created through their own scheme. So not tributes created directly through Much Loved and then them selecting to support the charity or tributes created through our funeral director partners and then selecting support the charity, but tributes okay. created directly through their own scheme. So through the links on their website. Um, yeah. But if you're not receiving alerts each time there's activity on your account, then if you go to the manage tab in your partner area, and again, this is available for both Optimum and Advantage Partners. Click on Alert Preferences, and then you can just click on Add a New Email Address. And you can see here there's a massive range of alerts that you can choose to receive. So I won't read them all out, but maybe a little bit of homework is to just check that you're getting them or check the relevant person's getting them. Or if you've got a sort of in-memory email address, check they're going there. Uh, wherever they're going to be seen, then make sure that you've got that set up because that's available for you to, to have access to. The other bit I wanted to show you within the Manage tab is this training and support site. Um, and hopefully you've all had a look at this before. It's, at, it's, a, it's a great way to register for your webinars as well as the emails that we send out to tell you about them. Uh, but there's loads of training resources in here, lots of videos of us talking through the different aspects of the service. Um, and then this partner resources tab here is super useful. So if we click on that, you can also see um, at the top mouse, it's got all the much loved modules. And we um, this is where we store all the recordings. So the recordings of today's session will be available in here uh, probably by the end of the week. But more importantly, you've also got the social media tab. Um, as that's what we're chatting about today. Um, and in the read more, you can see you've, all, you've got our logos. So if you want to use our logos, you've got all of our handles available. And then also there are loads of images that we've preloaded. So if you just want to take social media posts into your own hands and you want to do something yourself, but you're not sure about the imagery to use, you can use any of the images that we've pre-supplied here. So you can just download them. Um, and you can you can overlay them with wording, whatever you want to do. So there, there's all sort of seasonal images here. So we've got a selection that are kind of more wintry and autumnal, some for the summer, some for spring, and then some for particular uh, seasonal events during the year. So Mother's Day and Father's Day, um, and we'll continue adding to those. So there's a fantastic resource available to you. Um, 
So yeah, so that's my demo bit. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and let you to pick this up, and I'll have a quick look at the at the questions. Okay, so thank you, Sally, for for stepping us through all of that. And as you could see, we had the seasonal images there, the ones that we released. Um, I think it was first of November. Um, as I, as we mentioned, the um, end of year totals. Uh, are going to be customized for you and um, you'll be contacted this week about those. So, so they are not there yet, um, but, but you'll get access to them very soon. But there's all that whole host of other posts that are relevant and interesting for you. So thanks for stepping us through. And um, right, so a little bit then about what we're suggesting. We already mentioned a few ideas of what to, to include in terms of showing how you've used the funds, uh, how it helped you provide services, quotes, testimonials, that sort of stuff. But I think overall, the the one piece of guidance is to to kind of put positive language at the at the tone of it because that that's really something that's going to help you. Um, talk about and, and celebrate how in memory giving has made a difference for the better for your organization. Um, we would always encourage positive language use. Um, and, and also uh, to think about how your audience can be involved if they choose. Not every single post has to promote that, but it's good to, to mix it up a little bit and, and give them the option to be involved if they want to be. So a little bit of a preview uh, of what's what's to come. Um, these are some of the posts that are going to be made available, and here's how how they can then be adapted to to have the figures that are relevant for you. So that's just a little bit of a preview. There are um, this year we've taken the decision to provide both Christmassy ones or seasonal ones, and ones that you can use all year round. So we hope that you'll make the most of the opportunity to celebrate this all year round, not, not just in December. And we would naturally encourage you to, to tag us. Uh, we'll pop our social handles in the chat for you, but you could see they're also in the partner area, so you can grab them there. We would very much appreciate it. And we will follow you back uh, for any mentions if we're not already following you. So, so please do. Um, uh, get active and uh, we'd love to follow you. I just have a few more ideas uh, and resources that I think you'll find valuable regardless of where you are in your social journey. So first of all, one of the much loved resources and um, uh, bits of help that we provide are dedication pages. Um, really, it's not too late for, for Christmas campaigns. Um, if you, if you have a Christmas dedication page, for example, social media is a great way to share this with a really wide audience. And you see an example here of Mummy Star who've, who've done their sky full of stars. Uh, you've got Art Gowan hospices and their light up a life and this service is free. Um, so it, it We've done all the background work for this. It's a fully branded um, campaign page for you. It's really perfect for for, fun, for raising funds, but also creating engagement, whether you're doing a light up a life or, or whether you're taking a more creative use and, and allowing supporters to pass on messages to your team members, or uh, it, perhaps you just want uh, your visitors to upload a photo. So. There are lots of uh, creative uses. If you just speak to your account manager, they'll be able to um, come up with a really creative use for you. They can be set up in as little as five minutes. So they can be as fancy or as, uh, or as simple as you wish um, and are really fantastic for, for encouraging engagement. Um, another resource that I have to mention to you which we're raving about um, every chance we get is if you're not already familiar with canva i know some of you have social media teams you have full marketing teams that will support you and some of you might not 
Um, but um, Canva is, is a solution we really recommend. Um, and, and as you are, if, if you are a charity, uh, you can get the free version. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a free tool anyway, but if you wanted to use the pro version, even that's free if you're a charity. So um, that's, a, that's a great one. Um, and it comes with a lot of pre-formatted stuff. So you don't need to sweat over what size posts and what size images for which social channel, because unhelpfully they all vary. Um, and there are lots of uh, free online tutorials there. Um, so um, we we definitely, we're huge fans. Um, we've got, um, uh, we, we usually notify you when we're releasing the next collection of, of the seasonal assets. So, so we provide descriptions of, of much loved there. So you can describe us to your potential supporters if you wish. And we've got the useful logos and the images that you can use and it's all free. So definitely uh, another tool um, for, your, um, for your use. Okay. And then some rounding off with, with some last um, notes and ideas. Don't forget all of these ready-made assets that we've got because they're they're really really powerful and why wouldn't you use them basically? Because they really help you focus on your supporters with stories like this one that you can see it helps you talk about outcomes. It gives you real life examples and um, and and um, just helps you share about all the various events and activities and milestones as well. Your fundraising milestones. So. Brilliant. Thank Thanks. you. Yvonne. So uh, just a quick reminder uh, before we finish. So additional resources, you've got all of those social media resources um, in your support site um, that hangs from your partner area from the manage tab and then uh, support and training. But that's the URL address for the page. So if you wanted to directly access it, in fact, I'll just pop it in the chat. Um, and then in case you want to bookmark it because it is a fantastic resource for you um, and that's where we'll load up all of the new assets so it was underneath uh, partner resources and then social media um, and also underneath partner resources you can also access all of the new and um, sign up to any new webinars we're just about to load all of our new sessions for next year um, and you can also watch back any pre-recorded sessions that we've previously run. There's loads of really great stuff in there. So I definitely recommend having a look. Um, in terms of the end of year posts, so we'll be in touch with you. Your account manager will be in touch with you with some suggested designs. You'll be able to choose the design that you'd like to use. We'll put the figures in it. You, if you want, you can supply us with your brand colours so we can really um, style it to uh, match your, or organi your organisation really well. So we'll be in touch with those in the next couple of weeks. So uh, no need for you to do anything. Just wait for us to get in touch. And you can either use them this year or you can hold off and use them in January or February, if you like, whenever you've got, uh, you know, maybe if you've got a quieter time, you might want to kind of put that information in there. And as Yuta mentioned earlier, because I'd asked her, <laughs> you know, they, this kind of information can be used at any time of the year. So don't. You don't, don't feel that you have to wait until December or January. If you re reach a milestone at any um, point in the rest of the year, you can use it. Or if you just want to use some of the assets that we provided with you as a way to promote tribute pages, it may just be a simple post telling your supporters that you have tribute pages. Um, and also maybe just an explanation of what a tribute page is. Um, that's a term that is you know very recognisable to us, but it might not be to your partners. So maybe a little post with an explanation of what an online tribute page is and what it can do um, using some of the images that we provide would create a really nice um, engaging post. Um, and just lastly, if you've got any questions, please speak to us, um, get in touch with your account manager. If you're not sure who they are, uh, hopefully you should be, <laughs> then um, just email us at support at muchlove.com. We've got a fantastic support team. They're available nine to five, Monday to Friday on email um or you can give us a call um yeah so that's it so just 